All right, so this is the 58 I've found out after a lot more research and I found some paperwork for the car. 58 Magnet, MG Magnet. Uh, picked it up down in Tucson, Arizona. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I ended up getting in contact with the original owner. Well, not the original. I assume it must have been the second owner, but he owned it for about 40 years, so he owned, you know, he's got a lot of story to it. I got bored, edited the uh, famous um, <coughs> Mike Finnegan. No, David Freiberger. David Freiberger, Comet Wash here, and, uh, you know, it came out pretty good. And I went through, I went. I went over and I polished the car afterwards, just for just for shits and giggles. You know, wanted to see if the paint would come out shiny, and it did. And then it actually made a between the comet wash and the polish, it gave a kind of a cool patina to the paint between right here and then up in this corner over here. Got a little bit of the black paint. I found out that it was uh, the black paint underneath all this is spray paint. In the late '60s, the the last uh, registered owner. Had, uh, so we got some more up here I thought was kind of cool. Which is really interesting is, you know, when they do the paint and they spray it, they're supposed to do 50% overlap or something like that. And obviously these were the uh, the thin areas in the paint. And you couldn't tell, I'd imagine, before when the paint was still good. But after some, you know, time in the sun and polishing and scrubbing off, uh, those are the thin areas. And I thought it made kind of a neat pattern. Just something cool to, to see in person. Anyways, talk to the... Longest registered owner, he bought it in uh, the early 60s, I believe it was. So I'd imagine that he was the second owner. He lived in Brooklyn, uh, and he drove, He bought it in New York City um, from a used car dealer. Uh, I think it was for $250, $280, um, which today is roughly what I paid for it now. So, you know, I paid with inflation and all that. Paid about what he paid for it all that time ago. Oh, that's where my extension cord went to. Yeah, so, you know, the seats are pretty trashed. Kind of what you would expect after so long. These are the original seats. When I talked to the longest registered owner, um, we never had them done. I did find quotes for new seats uh, underneath that rear seat back here, but he apparently didn't end up going with that. Um, he did have it repainted, although, and uh, that's how he got it from uh, black back to the original gray. So this is the original birch gray color the car is supposed to be. Um, the, you know, the, uh, I looked up on the car. I didn't think there was that much rust to it. He said that it was a bit of a, uh, not a good candidate for restoration, but he's got some fiberglass here. He told me that he had done uh, to give the shape back to the car. Obviously these panels, I'd imagine, are not very easy to find. I haven't given it a shot myself, but so this, this is fiberglass all the way down to here. So I'll have to figure something after that, find out if the panel is remade. If not, I have some plans to have a new panel made. Um, he did have the engine rebuilt, and he said he didn't put very many miles on the new engine before he parked it. Uh, but it's pretty evident that it was new. I knew that it was new before I even talked to the owner, the uh, longest registered owner. I got it from a guy uh, out in Tucson, and apparently it's changed hands several times since the last registered owner. So, yeah, there we go. There's the 1800. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a 1500. 1500 cc engine. She's not very big, um, but dimensionally it's the same size as the uh, MGB 1800 cc engines. Um, he's got some wiring got all chopped up here. It's missing the grill. The last research owner and speaking with him, I found that he actually has um, a good number of the pieces still. Um, so, let's see if I can get them back from him. Just be kind of cool to have the original pieces to the car back on the car. Uh, not too much is missing. I thought it was pretty put together for the most part. I mean, some crucial pieces are obviously missing. There's no dash, you might have noticed. <clears throat> we got the, all the windows are all still there. There is a crack up in the windshield. I don't know if you can see that, right about there. And uh, that will have to be replaced, I suppose. Depends how hard it is to get a hold of it. If not, I'll just try to have the crack fixed or, you know, uh, glued, however they do it, to uh, keep it from spreading best I can. But it's not too bad. They cleaned up okay, and they're dirty again, but they cleaned okay. 
And then this back one, it's pretty good there too. Uh, for the most part, I didn't think there was that much rust in the car. Like I was saying, ow, that's pokey. Let's see, I found out that this trunk lid likes to pop open when you tow it. Well, okay, let's get underneath there. Yeah, so, I didn't think it was that bad. <clears throat> I've seen worse in trunks, but... The point is that there's no holes. And I can work with that. Um, even if there was holes, it wouldn't be too hard to recreate that particular area. There is a hole down here, down near the driver, underneath the driver's seat here. Uh, probably too difficult to get to. But it's just these panels here are just completely rusted out, completely gone. You can see, and at least in person here, there's been some Bondo work right here. Yeah, there you go. So that's a little piece of air bubble that was in the Bondo. And uh, same right here, didn't get sanded out all the way. So you can see there's Bondo here. Bondo's in the doors all the way down. And then you can see there's some rust bubbling up over here. Uh, but that's pretty typical. Almost every car I've ever seen rusts right there. And we have more Bondo down here. You can feel it's uneven. And you can see the air bubbles and the paint. Uh, and not the paint, but the Bondo. And then the paint exemplifies it so you can see it even more. We have some more Bondo here. Um, this is pretty evident of the Bondo. There's some deep scratches that were never sanded out. Uh, you know, aside from the bubbling rust, <laughs> there's some deep scratches. But the floor pans are all there still. Oh, fuck. You know, the doors close okay. The reason is the guy I bought it from took it off its hinges. So that way, when he went to go get a bonded title, it would freeze for less. Yeah, close enough. But yeah, this driver door closes, opens and closes okay. It's actually on all the way. So that believes me to lead that the car's frame, the structural pieces of it, I know it's a unibody and all, but the structural pieces of the car itself are pretty sound. Um, between looking at the the doors that clo open and close that are actually attached properly and looking at the frame rails down over here and over here there's no significant rust they're still painted i looked underneath the car and uh the frame rails the main frame rails that go through the car are pretty good so i imagine from what i'm between what i've gathered from looking at it and the last registered owner below about a foot up from the bottom of the car is pretty rusted out but nothing I don't think that I can handle I'll probably get it fixed uh, so that's the magnet bumpers falling off that happened when I was towing it not really sure how I didn't even pull on the bumper but uh, yeah there we go that's the magnet plan is probably take the doors off and kind of start there see how bad the doors are uh, and then cut that fiberglass out of there and see what I'm working with um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think it's mostly there. There's enough to work with that we can get her back on the road. Pretty excited about it. Always wanted one. Uh, when I first learned about them when I was about 13, I just like, I want one of those one day. And uh, I didn't think to get one so early in life, but I saw it for sale and it was just like, you know what? What are the chances of another one coming up nearby? Right, and I've got the uh, you know, the trusty uh, Chicago Electric Harbor Freight rotary sander. Uh, you know, I you know it's just as good as Snap On, right? Not kidding. Uh, I I just don't like to buy tools unless I know I'm going to use them and I'm going to enjoy them as much as I think that I will. So I buy the cheap ones, and uh, you know if it does pretty well, I like it. I'll buy a nice one, and then I'm just impressed with how much better the nice one works, how much easier it is than the cheap one. It's usually how I roll. standing here for a while and um, I've gotten down to steel here and um, well 
I'm not really finding that many holes. There's a big bump over here, some sort of dent maybe? Uh, not quite sure, but it, it was the first piece of metal show up, and you can feel just running your finger over it's dented up. Um, there's a little pinhole here. Got some stuff going on over here. I can see some Bondo here, so maybe this corner is bad. Um, right here we're getting down there, but I mean, not what I was expecting. From what I was being told, this whole area should have just been rusted out. But uh, so far it's not bad. It's really not bad. I've seen cars over the pond in England uh, a lot more rust. Um, and they, they bring those ones back to life. So I think this is going to be much easier than I had anticipated uh, when it comes to rust repair. Alright, so with some more sanding here I've gotten down a little bit more. This is definitely a hole behind here. Not a big surprise because we saw the bubbling on the outside. Um, but still not a whole lot of bad to be found. Um, I sanded back some more here and over here, no holes. Um, and then just to be totally honest with you, the, the DA sander with 80 grit paper is not really the right job, the right tool for the job here. Uh, what we need is like one of those flapper discs uh, for a grinder or a, it's, it's, it's this weird looking thing that helps remove paint for a grinder. Um, it's just I didn't want to drive out and buy one, but you know, this is taking forever. I'm getting a little bit impatient. I'm thinking we might just have to bite the bullet, go buy one, you know, before we run out of daylight here. All right, off to the auto parts store. One of many, many trips you make to the auto parts store while you are restoring your car, doing anything with your car, really. Anyone will know that. Anyone who works on their cars, you gotta make at least 10 trips to the auto parts store before you can, you know, before you can say the job is done. It doesn't even matter if the car runs, you just gotta keep driving back and forth. Alright, now it's later in the day and uh, I've got the deal. This is what they look like. Um, I was kind of looking for one of my angle grinder, but uh, this is all they had at the auto parts store. I thought they had the style I was looking for, but they do not. So, you know, here we go. This will be much, much faster. Alright, so this took much less time. You know, right tool for the job really makes a difference. Can you believe that? Alright, so anyways, we got some here. Here and you can you can see the color discoloration um, of where it's at, and then it's solid all the way through to here. There's a little more, um, a little more bondo. That's what's holding this together in these holes. Just some bondo. Um, got a little little nib right there. That'll have to be. This is just a little bit of pitting. Nothing serious. Uh, we got more holes here and then holes, hole. Holes, holes, all the way up to around here. And this is kind of interesting here. Uh, I don't know when this happened, because it, it's kind of hard to tell. It could just be some love marks from the factory, I suppose. Um, or it could have been, I mean, there is a little bit of a hole right here. So it could have been from when they last had this back. But um, something thing that I am noticing, now that we're getting into it a little more, is there is a substantial amount of Bondo here. I mean, this is a steep climb. Um, right off of here but they also didn't uh, you know take it down to bare metal like you're supposed to when you put Bondo in you know Bondo is a uh, it sticks best to metal not not paint um, and that's when you get the new Bondo is much better than the old Bondo but the old Bondo you'd be driving down the road and you hit a nice bump and, and there you'd be missing a piece of Bondo out of your body um, but the new stuff is much better uh, at preventing that but um, yeah, you can still see there's little, you can see it goes way up into this panel here. And so I'm going to have to sand that back just to make sure there's no surprises underneath there. And then uh, I want to go back over it with the, the correct tools and the correct amount of Bondo. That's a lot of Bondo. I mean, you don't need that much Bondo uh, just to cover up um, a couple of, you know, smaller holes like this. Um, you know, these need to be covered up, but not, not like that like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, a little dip here as the panel comes down right to here and probably from when it got weakened by these holes, but I mean we don't need this much Bondo. That's just excessive. Alright, so I, I ground back this a lot more um, to get more of the Bondo out. It wasn't, there was no rust or anything, anything like that nasty underneath the Bondo. Um, it's not too uncommon even for the professionals. I'm not a professional body guy by any means, but... Uh, for them to do almost a whole panel of Bondo very thinly and then, you know, uh, fade it in or uh, feather it in. So that way you can't tell. Um, 
Uh, so that means it's not too uncommon. It was just a lot more Bondo than I really thought was necessary to cover up the little bit of rust we got over here. Um, not sure, quite sure how we'll fix the rust. I'll probably just kind of just tack weld, tack weld, tack weld. We've got, we've got to punch out the actual Bondo that's in here. Tack weld them closed, grind them flat with a grinder and a flapper wheel, and um, then Bondo over that to cover up any of these deeper scratches from the grinding process here. Um, these bigger ones probably require a little bit more work. I might have to um, make, make a little cut down here and then weld in a new piece of steel all together. Um, we'll see how we go. Um, these small ones though, a little tack welding, it'll be fine. Um, and then here, these are just little paint effects that I had already, that I just didn't notice and I just right down to bare metal. We're not even gonna fuck around with trying to sand them out. We're just gonna go straight down to bare metal. Some of them you can see they were already at bare metal from rocks, rock chips and such. You see right there, right where my finger's pointing. That was a bit of rust. That has it's pitted slightly, so it'll have to be filled in uh, regardless of, um, with how to come down to metal. And regardless, I'll have to uh, fill that in with a little bit of um, a little bit of putty, uh, shoot, glazing putty. I think they call it. I think that's worked well for me in the past to cover up these little rust spots we get. And then the, for this panel over here, I you know, probably won't be touching it for a little while longer again, you know, uh, more than a couple days. And that's pretty bare, fresh metal. We don't want to be having any rust. So I've got some primer here I'm shaking up. And we'll just, you know, put a light mist of that down just to protect the metal, keep it from rusting any more than it already is.